Hi folks, Rough and Ream part two. Let's see if we do better. Bunch of changes, no pecking on the reaming for sure. We're gonna ream in the Tormach and we're gonna do that by using the shorter reamer. I just chopped a couple inches off of this. I, I hate to do that because it's nice to have that length if you ever needed it, but the truth is it's very unrealistic. I'm going to need that long of a part, just not the kind of work that we do. I also bought this as a used reamer off eBay for pretty cheap, so um, I would rather have a tool that I can use today correctly than one a, a year down the road that may I may need it longer. We'll, we'll deal with it then. Um, I did check the run out right now. As you can see here, still about a thou. So I'm gonna be curious to see if that's a problem or not. It may have definitely been worse in the Bridgeport yesterday. 100 RPMs, so half the RPMs that we were doing before. I'm gonna try it five inches a minute on the plunge. We're going to double check to make sure we have the correct pre-ream dimension. I wonder if I goofed uh, yesterday. Also, we're gonna do it at 742, so that's eight thou total or four thou on the radius of material left to ream. It really looked like a lot more on the bridge port. And one of the other big changes, thanks to my buddy James at War Machine, is we're going to, uh, instead of doing like in a 2D adaptive where we plunge down and then go around, we're gonna do a bore uh, operation, which I never use in Fusion 360, but that's gonna do basically an interpolated plunge all the way down. And I know it may not seem a lot different, but it really is because you're gonna be cutting basically with the bottom of the tool and not the side of the tool. So that's all the difference in the world. James's point was you've got more axial strength than you do radial strength, which is really interesting. On the flip side, tools generally like to cut on their side because the, the way the tools are ground and made, um, they're not meant to, they don't do as well, I should say, plunging. So I, this is an interpolated plunge and we're not plunging into solid material. So, I'm curious to see what it sounds like. Um, we're also going to, I kind of didn't want to do this because I like this idea of just reamy drilling with a half inch, but we're going to go ahead and drill it with an 11 sixteenths uh, before we do that boring operation. So that's going to put even less power or less, um, we're going to be asking, you know, less of this tool. Um, so let's see if we can hit this, uh, 0.7505 or so, a lot closer than the 752 we got. Oh, last suggestion too, if you do this a lot, uh, seems to be the consensus that switch from high speed steel to a carbide tipped reamer. I'm sure they're more expensive, but it sounds like you can really rock and roll uh, with those.
Let's check our pre ream diameter here. <clears throat> Okay, so 739. We wanted it to be 742. All right, we'll talk about that in a second here, though. Seven thirty nine five. Let's try it this way. Seven forty. So we're about two thou under, and that's okay for a couple. Well, I'm not concerned about the pre green diameter that when it's that close because. I did double check the chart and 15 thou, which would be 735, should be okay. So we're well inside of that. Um, why did we get two or three thou off toolpath? The answer is I don't know. A couple things it could be, could be the fact that it's a roughing end mill. So I've got these serrations in here. Um, it could be the machine, could be the tool holder. Um, it's, I also want to say it's not that much. Um, that's three thou on the diameter. So half thou and a half on the radius. I know I can do better um, and we can adjust it. That's clearly not the task at hand here. So I'm not going to worry about that or apologize for that. Um, I, you know, I guess what I do want to know is, is, you know, what is, what are the factors and, and uh, attributes of this part going into this ream? Cause that's what I do want to nail down. Strike and roll. So this is 100 RPMs, five inches a minute. I'm using a G85 uh, ringing cycle in Fusion 360, never used it. The code looks like, oh, that's not good. Oh shoot, darn it, John. I don't think I had my collet tightened down enough. Hmm, am I wrong? Looks like, well, I thought I saw, <laughs> I thought I saw it rotating in the collet. Well, we certainly reamed part of it. I, I, I better finish. I've got these little, some little lines there, but I don't know. It. Okay, it didn't go all the way through, but let's check our diameter here anyway. There we go. Four tenths. 751 now. Adam asked for it to be 751, so um, that wasn't the goal because um, it's a 7505 reamer. Um, but we did, like I said, you saw that runout. Actually, that runout wasn't as bad as I thought. It wasn't quite a... Um, uh, full thou, um, and this is not a floating, you know, floating reaming holder. Let's check it again. Seven five oh seven, seven five oh six. Now, this is now you're getting into can you, um, can you really, can you really check tenths with snap gauges and shars tools? I'm not saying you can't, uh, but I would not say I can reliably either. Um, one of the things I check, because a lot of people tell me you can't do that. Well, okay, I'm not doing parts that are subject to plus or minus a few tenths either. And what I do like is if I can get consistency and repeatability, um, then that is to me very indicative. And we're getting repeat, you know, we're getting back to this 7508 type number here when it starts to click out of the handle. And you can see better finish on the ID. You can see it didn't go through at the bottom. That was probably just my mistake. So 
that, that was great. That was much better. Uh, obviously, we kind of stacked the deck in our favor there. The same machine, the shorter reamer, doing more homework, drilling out more, everything we mentioned in the beginning. And, and thank you guys. It's, it's really crazy. When I started all this on this channel about 10 years ago, I started it because I didn't know anything. And I thought, what I'm learning, I'd like to try to give back and pay it forward. And now, you know, the comments that we're getting below are almost the majority from people that are seasoned machinists or tool and die guys or really know their stuff. So um, sometimes it makes me almost question putting these videos out because I'm such a novice uh, at some of this stuff, but I do really love it. It's really fun. Um, and let me know, do you guys still like seeing this kind of stuff? I feel like uh, maybe I feel like the voices from the those that are in the know and experience are sometimes louder than the than the John Saunders from five and 10 years ago when we were just trying to learn. But um, this is a good thing. This gives me a good recipe to make the uh, A-bomb parking attachment. So that's gonna be up next. Thanks folks, take care.